In game theory, folk theorems are a class of theorems about possible Nash equilibrium payoff profiles in repeated games Friedman 1971. The original folk theorem concerned the payoffs of all the Nash equilibria of an infinitely repeated game. This result was called the folk theorem because it was widely known among game theorists in the 1950s, even though no one had published it. Friedman's 1971 theorem concerns the payoffs of certain subgame perfect Nash equilibria (SPE) of an infinitely repeated game and so strengthens the original folk theorem by using a stronger equilibrium concept subgame perfect Nash equilibria rather than Nash equilibrium. The folk theorem suggests that if the player is patient enough and far-sighted, i.e. if discount factor delta 1 display style delta to 1 then not only can repeated interaction allow many spe outcomes but actually spe can allow virtually any outcome in the sense of average payoffs put more simply the theorem suggests that anything that is feasible and individually rational is possible for example in the one shot prisoner's dilemma if both players cooperate that is not a nash equilibrium the only Nash equilibrium is that both players defect, which is also a mutual min-max profile. One folk theorem says that, in the infinitely repeated version of the game, provided players are sufficiently patient, there is a Nash equilibrium such that both players cooperate on the equilibrium path. But in finitely repeated game by using backward induction it can be determined that players play Nash equilibrium in the last period of the game which is to defect. Topic. Preliminaries Any Nash equilibrium payoff in a repeated game must satisfy two properties 1. Individual rationality IR, the payoff must weakly dominate the min-max payoff profile of the constituent stage game. That is, the equilibrium payoff of each player must be at least as large as the min-max payoff of that player. This is because a player achieving less than his min-max payoff always has incentive to deviate by simply playing his min-max strategy at every history. 2. Feasibility. The payoff must be a convex combination of possible payoff profiles of the stage game. This is because the payoff in a repeated game is just a weighted average of payoffs in the basic games. Folk theorems are partially converse claims, they say that, under certain conditions which are different in each folk theorem, every payoff that is both IR and feasible can be realized as a Nash equilibrium payoff profile in the repeated game. There are various folk theorems, some relate to finitely repeated games while others relate to infinitely repeated games. Infinitely repeated games without discounting In the undiscounted model, the players are patient. They don't differentiate between utilities in different time periods. Hence, their utility in the repeated game is represented by the sum of utilities in the basic games. When the game is infinite, a common model for the utility in the infinitely repeated game is the infimum of the limit of means. If game results in a path of outcomes x t display style x underscore t, player i's utility is u i equals lim t infinity inf 1 t t equals 0 t u i x t display style u underscore i equals lim underscore t 2 inf t inf frac 1 t sum underscore t equals 0 caret t u underscore i x underscore t where u i display style u underscore i is the basic game utility function of player i 
an infinitely repeated game without discounting is often called a supergame. The folk theorem in this case is very simple and contains no preconditions. Every IR feasible payoff profile in the basic game is an equilibrium payoff profile in the repeated game. The proof employs what is called grim or grim trigger strategy. All players start by playing the prescribed action and continue to do so until someone deviates. If player I deviates, all players switch to the strategy which minmaxes player I forever after. The one stage gain from deviation contributes zero to the total utility of the player. The utility of a deviating player cannot be higher than his minmax payoff. Hence all players stay on the intended path. Topic: <inaudible> Subgame perfection. The above Nash equilibrium is not always subgame perfect. If punishment is costly for the punishers, the threat of punishment is not credible. A subgame perfect equilibrium requires a slightly more complicated strategy. The punishment should not last forever, it should last only a finite time which is sufficient to wipe out the gains from deviation. After that, the other players should return to the equilibrium path. The limit of means criterion ensures that any finite time punishment has no effect on the final outcome. Hence, limited time punishment is a subgame perfect equilibrium. Coalition subgame perfect equilibria. An equilibrium is called a coalition Nash equilibrium if no coalition can gain from deviating. It is called a coalition subgame perfect equilibrium if no coalition can gain from deviating after any history. With the limit of means criterion, an outcome is attainable in coalition Nash equilibrium or in coalition subgame perfect equilibrium, if and only if it is Pareto efficient and weakly coalition individually rational. Topic: <laughs> Overtaking. Some authors claim that the limit of means criterion is unrealistic, because it implies that utilities in any finite time span contribute zero to the total utility. However, if the utilities in any finite time span contribute a positive value, and the value is undiscounted, then it is impossible to attribute a finite numeric utility to an infinite outcome sequence. A possible solution to this problem is that, instead of defining a numeric utility for each infinite outcome sequence, we just define the preference relation between two infinite sequences. We say that agent I display style I strictly prefers the sequence of outcomes Y T display style Y underscore T over the sequence x t display style x underscore t if lim t infinity inf t equals zero t u i y t Minus U I X T greater than zero display style lim underscore t two inf t inf sum underscore t equals zero carrot t u underscore i y underscore t u underscore i x underscore t greater than zero. For example, consider the sequences. X equals zero 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 display style x equals zero 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 and y equals minus one two zero zero Display style y equals minus one two zero zero. 
According to the limit of means criterion, they are equivalent but according to the overtaking criterion y display style y is better than x display style x see overtaking criterion for more information the folk theorems with the overtaking criterion are slightly weaker than with the limit of means criterion only outcomes that are strictly individually rational can be attained in nash equilibrium this is because, if an agent deviates, he gains in the short run, and this gain can be wiped out only if the punishment gives the deviator strictly less utility than the agreement path. The following folk theorems are known for the overtaking criterion. Strict stationary equilibria – A Nash equilibrium is called strict if each player strictly prefers the infinite sequence of outcomes attained in equilibrium, over any other sequence he can deviate to. A Nash equilibrium is called stationary if the outcome is the same in each time period. An outcome is attainable in strict stationary equilibrium if and only if for every player the outcome is strictly better than the player's minimax outcome. Strict stationary subgame perfect equilibria – An outcome is attainable in strict stationary subgame perfect equilibrium, if for every player the outcome is strictly better than the player's minimax outcome note that this is not an if and only if result. To achieve subgame perfect equilibrium with the overtaking criterion, it is required to punish not only the player that deviates from the agreement path, but also every player that does not cooperate in punishing the deviant. The stationary equilibrium concept can be generalized to a periodic equilibrium in which a finite number of outcomes is repeated periodically, and the payoff in a period is the arithmetic mean of the payoffs in the outcomes. That mean payoff should be strictly above the minimax payoff. Strict stationary coalition equilibria, with the overtaking criterion, if an outcome is attainable in coalition Nash equilibrium, then it is Pareto efficient and weakly coalition individually rational. On the other hand, if it is Pareto efficient and strongly coalition individually rational it can be attained in strict stationary coalition equilibrium. Topic infinitely repeated games with discounting Assume that the payoff of a player in an infinitely repeated game is given by the average discounted criterion with discount factor 0 ui equals 1 minus delta t 0 delta t ui x t display style u underscore i equals 1 delta sum underscore t g e q 0 delta caret t u underscore i x underscore t the discount factor indicates how patient the players are. The folk theorem in this case requires that the payoff profile in the repeated game strictly dominates the minmax payoff profile i.e., each player receives strictly more than the minmax payoff. Let a be a pure strategy profile with payoff profile x which strictly dominates the minmax payoff profile. One can define a Nash equilibrium with x as resulting payoff profile as follows, 1. All players start by playing a and continue to play a if no deviation occurs. Point two. If any one player, say player I, deviated, play the strategy profile M which minmaxes I forever after point three. Ignore multilateral deviations. If player I gets epsilon more than his minmax payoff each stage by following one, then the potential loss from punishment is one one minus delta e. Display style frac one one delta epsilon. If delta is close to one, this outweighs any finite one stage gain, making the strategy a Nash equilibrium. An alternative statement of this folk theorem allows the equilibrium payoff profile X to be any IR feasible payoff profile, it only requires there exists an IR feasible payoff profile X, which strictly dominates the minmax payoff profile. Then, the folk theorem guarantees that it is possible to approach X in equilibrium to any desired precision for every epsilon there exists a Nash equilibrium where the payoff profile is a distance epsilon away from X. Topic. Subgame perfection Attaining a subgame perfect equilibrium in discounted games is more difficult than in undiscounted games. 
The cost of punishment does not vanish as with the limit of means criterion. It is not always possible to punish the non-punishers endlessly as with the overtaking criterion since the discount factor makes punishments far away in the future irrelevant for the present. Hence, a different approach is needed, the punishers should be rewarded. This requires an additional assumption, that the set of feasible payoff profiles is full-dimensional and the min-max profile lies in its interior. The strategy is as follows. 1. All players start by playing A and continue to play A if no deviation occurs. Point 2. If any one player, say player I, deviated, play the strategy profile M which minmaxes I for N periods, choose N and delta large enough so that no player has incentive to deviate from phase 1, 3. If no players deviated from phase 2, all player J does not equal I gets rewarded epsilon above J's min max forever after, while player I continues receiving his min max. Full dimensionality and the interior assumption is needed here. 4. If player J deviated from phase 2, all players restart phase 2 with J as target point 5. Ignore multilateral deviations, player J does not equal I now has no incentive to deviate from the punishment phase 2. This proves the subgame perfect folk theorem. <laughs> <laughs> Finitely repeated games without discount Assume that the payoff of a player in an finitely repeated game is given by a simple arithmetic mean u i equals 1 t t equals 0 t u i h t Display style u underscore i equals frac one t sum underscore t equals zero carrot t u underscore i h underscore t. A folk theorem for this case has the following additional requirement: in the basic game, for every player i, there is a Nash equilibrium e i display style e underscore i. That is strictly better for I than his min-max payoff. This requirement is stronger than the requirement for discounted infinite games, which is in turn stronger than the requirement for undiscounted infinite games. This requirement is needed because of the last step. In the last step, the only stable outcome is a Nash equilibrium in the basic game. Suppose a player I gains nothing from the Nash equilibrium since it gives him only his min-max payoff. Then, there is no way to punish that player. On the other hand, if for every player there is a basic equilibrium which is strictly better than min-max, a repeated game equilibrium can be constructed in two phases. In the first phase, the players alternate strategies in the required frequencies to approximate the desired payoff profile. In the last phase, the players play the preferred equilibrium of each of the players in turn. In the last phase, no player deviates since the actions are already a basic game equilibrium. If an agent deviates in the first phase, he can be punished by minmaxing him in the last phase. If the game is sufficiently long, the effect of the last phase is negligible, so the equilibrium payoff approaches the desired profile. Topic. Applications Folk theorems can be applied to a diverse number of fields. For example, Anthropology, in a community where all behavior is well known, and where members of the community know that they will continue to have to deal with each other, then any pattern of behavior traditions, taboos, etc. may be sustained by social norms so long as the individuals of the community are better off remaining in the community than they would be leaving the community the minimax condition. International politics, agreements between countries cannot be effectively enforced. They are kept, however, because relations between countries are long-term and countries can use minimax strategies against each other. 
This possibility often depends on the discount factor of the relevant countries. If a country is very impatient, pays little attention to future outcomes, then it may be difficult to punish it or punish it in a credible way. On the other hand, MIT economist Franklin Fisher has noted that the folk theorem is not a positive theory. In considering, for instance, oligopoly behavior, the folk theorem does not tell the economist what firms will do, but rather that cost and demand functions are not sufficient for a general theory of oligopoly, and the economists must include the context within which oligopolies operate in their theory. In 2007, Borgs et al. proved that, despite the folk theorem, in the general case computing the Nash equilibria for repeated games is not easier than computing the Nash equilibria for one shot finite games, a problem which lies in the PPAD complexity class. The practical consequence of this is that no efficient polynomial time algorithm is known that computes the strategies required by folk theorems in the general case. <laughs> <laughs> Summary of folk theorems The following table compares various folk theorems in several aspects. Horizon – whether game is repeated finitely or infinitely many times. Utilities – whether the utility of a player in the repeated game is assumed to be an arithmetic mean or a discounted sum. Conditions on G – the basic game – whether there are any technical conditions that should hold in the one-shot game in order for the theorem to work. Conditions on X the target payoff vector whether the theorem works for any IR and feasible payoff vector, or only on a subset of these vectors. Equilibrium type – if all conditions are met, what kind of equilibrium is guaranteed by the theorem, Nash or subgame perfect? Punishment type – what kind of punishment strategy is used to deter players from deviating? <laughs> Notes <laughs>